Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, for your Midrake Madness, this week it's going to be a mono battle! I sent a sniper monkey at the email address in the description with the subject of mid rank madness, okay? Thanks again, Sniper Monkey, for screening the replays sent to you on my behalf. I really do appreciate it. And this is going to be a blind random mana battle. Hmm. How can we figure out who is what here? Okay, so you can repick if you don't like it, but you can lock it in if you do. Oh, these are stats. We've got Dark Templar, Big Tasano, Reality, and uh, 68 win percentage for Reality. 50%. Oh, there we go. 50% from somebody else. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, can we see it here? Nope, we're just going to figure out um, what everybody's one unit that they can make in this game is. That's a mono battle, right? So it's a 4v4. And everybody can only make one unit. You can make one queen per hatchery, but other than that, you can't mass queens. Uh, Medivacs can only transport. And I f feel like that's about it. I don't know. It's been a while since I cast a mono battle. So thanks for sending it in. So Team North here, we've got no build order. A Terran player. We have ourselves... A Kalisix player. He is Terran as well. We got a Zerg player named Inquisition. And finally, a Protoss player, Kisung. Uh, Team South is Jax, Terran player. We have a Teal Zerg reality with that high 68% win percentage in mono battles, who's apparently really good at this. Dark Templar, who I think might be one of my dudes. I think he's a member of my Discord server. We'll see. We'll see if it's the same guy or not. And it's a fairly popular name, Dark Templar, but whatever. And then we have a Big Tosano, who is a Protoss player. He's open in double gas, so he's not Zealots. He could be Immortals, he could be Void Rays, he could be Carriers. Uh, a no-gas opening here from Dark Templar indicates, and the proxies indicates he's going to be Marines. There's really nothing else this could be other than Marines from Dark Templar. A double gas here from Jax indicates to me maybe tanks, maybe Cyclones. And reality going one gas, spawning pool, one base here is that he's going to be Lings. And yes, he is in fact, Reality is making Lings right now. So we got him figured out pretty darn quickly. And we got Dark Templar figured out making Marines. And that's all he can make. He can get him all the upgrades in the world, but no Metavax for healing. On the other side, Bis Big Toscano throwing up Gateway, Gateway, Gateway in the middle here too. So yeah, Team South wanted to rush. They talked about doing that. A bunker th coming up. Oh, who's throwing up this bunker? I can't tell what color it is. Stop pinging. Who the... Somebody tried to throw up a bunker there. I mean, obviously, it was one of the two Terran players on Team North here. Uh, no, I don't think it was orange. And what? Uh, what is blue doing here? What is Klisix producing? It might be Reapers. That's the only reason I could think of to throw up a bunker there. Inquisition. Trying to get a bunker... Or uh, a spine up. Because he's apparently either Roaches or Ravagers. If you're Ravagers, you can make Roaches, but they can't attack. You have to morph into Ravagers, but Ravagers before they can do that. So, Queen fighting. You better hope it's Roaches. But, yeah, Lings from Reality cruising in. This is this is rush times, man. That's a, too many drones getting pulled from Inquisition here. Not liking that very much. This is just chaos. I love it. I love it when you get early units. And Jax is Marauders. Okay, so that's his double gas. Where are his racks? Where is he? Oh, he built them right here. Dude, that was hard to see on the mini-map. Okay, cool. So it's Marauders, it's Marines, it's Lings. And then what is the final play here? What is Big Toscano up to? It's Adepts. Okay. So we got Team South figured out. It's going to be Lings, Marines, Marauders, and Adepts. So very early unit, unit or early game units here. Yeah, these probes will kill all of your Marauders if they can get surrounds on them, especially. Oh, no! Mike the Marauder is being obliterated, but he's taking a lot of workers with him. He sung's in a lot of trouble here. Come help! It is Roach. Okay, woof. That's nice for Inquisition that it's Roaches. Uh, the Adepts actually take bonus damage from Hellions. It's Hellions from No Build Order. Roaches from Inquisition. PSP's going for a starport. Maybe it's Battle Cruisers. 
I don't know. Uh, and then what is our yellow guy? I don't know. We oh, it's Void Rays. Keep sung for Void Rays. Oh no! Team South, you're in a lot of trouble, man. Void Rays are going to be a great answer. Well, not a great answer to Lings, but they can handle Lings. The Marines have got to be all the anti-air that Team South has in this game. You have to make really tons of Marines. Give them good upgrades. Give them Sim. Give them Combat Shield. Focus down the Roach. Warren says Team South. We got to take that out because then the Zerg player... Oh, it's a GG. Who just left... Uh, I think Inquisition just tapped. Inquisition was like, ah, okay. I'm getting be picked on here. Nobody's helping me. That is untrue, good sir. Mass Hellion versus Adepts and Marines is kind of amazing, honestly. This queen ugh, gets taken out. Bad times. Nidus coming up from reality. Yes, you can Nidus. Void Ray fighting against reality here. And actually wiped out most of Jack's economy and pretty much everything Jax is doing. So... We got chaos on both sides of the map here. The Marauder player didn't build any turrets to deal with the potential Void Rays coming across. This Void Ray from Kisong is attacking the Adepts of Big Tosano. Splash damage on the Hellions is getting damage done against these Adepts, and then the Void Ray can finish them off. Trying to repair here. The Void Rays don't want to come into range of these Queens or these Spores because the Queens will deal with them pretty effectively. I think it, is it, it is. It, yeah, two Queens. You can only get two Queens, and they can attack. It's the, you know, Zerg players, they kind of need that to stay alive early. Lings unloading from the Nida Swarm. What upgrades do the Lings have at this stage of the game? I don't know. Nothing. Nobody has any attack or armor upgrades whatsoever, but guess who got blue flame? No build orders got the blue flame. Gonna be even better against these Adepts, even better against these Marines, even better against these Lings. Honestly, they should have been feeding no build order, I think, as soon as they could, because Mass Hellion kind of just deals with all of this. It's Banshees from Cool Six. All right. Yeah, this is this is a lot of air from Team North, and the only anti-air Team South has are the Marines. That's why they wanted to rush so bad. Look at that blue flame eating up those adepts. Marauders from Jake's are still coming in. Let's see, and it's just got to be Marines. They need their Marine player. I don't know. Dark Templars, one base, five raxing it, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't know if it's going to be enough prismatic alignment available. No, that spore is going to stay alive as a result. This is one zergling from reality, taking in on Inquisition, Inquisition's hatchery. Marauders just trying to kill as much as they can because they can't protect themselves from these banshees. Oh, Marauder Mike, two kills only dead. However, Ling's wiping out what's left of your zerg player who quit a while ago, so whatever. Kisung is actually dead too. So Team North has lost their Roach player, and I think their Voider player is pretty much done. The only units that Kisung has available are a Void Ray. Uh, doesn't have enough money to rebuild, but does actually have a probe. So maybe, maybe this probe can rebuild if the teammates have some money to spare. Oh yeah, I mean this Banshee Hellion thing from Team North is sick. Well, this one voider, he's like, I can kill you. I can kill an entire Nexus. Let's get it. <laughs> what a game. What a chaotic game this is. Hit that like button if you're enjoying it. This has been tons of fun. Okay, Cloak Banshee against Marines. Oh, no. Uh, scan, is it too late? It is too late to kill the Banshees. This guy's got nine kills. Well, that's a she. Banshee pilots are she's. She's got nine kills. The Marines are coming back home because they're like, this Void Ray is getting too much work done. These Queens can't chase it forever. Uh, they're, they're trying, though. Hellbat transformation, go. Oh, that makes... You know what? That makes Hellions one of the better selections in a mono battle because Hellbats are actually pretty good against buildings. Marauders of Jax killing up. Kisung's final buildings here. Kisung might just get eliminated by building at this point. What are we pinging? Oh, see all these buildings of Big Tosano? Wipe those out too. Hellion's coming down from no build or we're going to be aggressive. We've been defending this whole time. I think if he just Hellbats up here, I think he does a ton of damage. Hellbat transformation, go! Come on! I mean... You'll kill that Nidus network better? Oh, fine. Okay, I guess... Yeah, there we go. Eat, 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 eat. Big chunks. 
big chunks of damage here. Blue Flame Hellbats against Ling's gonna do pretty, they're pretty happy to do that, honestly. Yeah, who's got the most supply here? No build orders at 78. Next closest person is that Dark Templar at 47. On the other side of the map, we've got Reality. Night is seeing, going after no build orders attempt to have a base. No build order, that's the only base he has. Adepts are trying to fight here too. Oh gosh, SCV line of Dark Templar getting obliterated. Why would you fight? Oh no! Okay, so all of his workers die. That was not the greatest choice. You just you can't fight Blue Flame Hellions, man. Worker count three for Dark Templar now. I mean, no one's on fire economically. The most workers anybody has is um 23. No, 28. 28 from Big Tosano, who's actually got some cannons. Okay, so all of the Hellions get killed by Marauders and Marines, and some cannons here from Big Tosano. On the other side, Lings are trying to kill the Banshee army, obviously, and taking out starports so that no more Banshees can be produced. Not really doing super hot with that. But this Nidus Ling stuff from Reality has been fantastic. He's got 1-1 one, one on his Lings. He's working on a lair so he can get 2-2. Two, two. Getting Adrenal on these Lings would be awesome, but I'm not sure he has enough time to do that. Big Tosano, one of the only people on two bases today. Technically, Klesix is as well. Klesix is on two bases, and I guess Reality is on two bases, and was on three for a minute, but he lost this to the Hellbats that we saw earlier. <sighs> if we actually calmed down a little bit here at ten and a half minutes, maybe. Oh, Kisung managed to rebuild, build a base up here, got one worker, oh no! Kisung, run your probe! It's the only probe you have! Get out of there! <laughs> oh, this Ling player Reality is being so cost efficient. Okay, save it, save the Nexus, save the Nexus, save the Nexus, save the Nexus. Awesome. The Banshee squad showed up, saved the Nexus, and yeah, that is where your Nidus erupts, and there are like eight Banshees there, and you just don't want to engage there whatsoever. Marauders from Jax are back up north. We're back, says Mike the Marauder. I'm a stim stutter step my way to wiping out your worker count. Senior no build order. You have 16, 15, 13, 12 GG. workers. No build order, GG's! And the Adepts are up here, tier from... Ah! Kisung taps out, too! So who's alive up here? Six, Mass Banshee. Mass Banshee has to do it. And I guess is also controlling no build orders Hellions here, too. Blue Flame Hellions, man. Not bad, but Stimmed Marines are better. Stimmed... Marines, woof, what upgrades do they have? 1-1, uh, one, one. so 1-1 one, one combat shield and stim, looking hot. So, at this point, if you are, uh, clicks here. Oh, we can't do anything about the warp prism, though. Oh, that's so smart to have a warp prism up here. Because nothing can kill it. Quick, build some turrets, kill that warp prism. It's buying time for... Team South, though, I guess we're over. I'm going to go with we are over now because, I mean, it's not a lot of supply down here for Team South. 39, 45, 96, and 40, but Team North is literally cool six at 54 total supply of Banshees. Missile turret doesn't even die. Marauders coming to make sure this income is not being relayed to cool six, who's, again, the only person left on Team North. Amazing. I mean, that was... That was such a chaotic 12 minutes. Holy crap. Non-stop action everywhere. Team South, they did what they had to do. They had to put the pressure on Team North and wipe them out. Because an army of Void Rays, Banshees, Hellions, and Roaches was going to win. It was going to defeat Team South. If it came out to like everyone max out and we meet in the middle, that army is going to win. But instead, they made sure that the Voidery count never got super high. They took Kisung down, and they made sure that the Roach player never got many Roaches out. And then from there, it was just dealing with Banshees and dealing with Hellions and Hellbats. And that was it. And this is not going to work. Cool six. You can't defend your way to victory in StarCraft. I'm sorry. Especially not when it is a 4v1 scenario, my friend. Like, I appreciate your Banshees are racking up tons of kills. That's great, in fact. So good. But yeah, Nidus is coming up everywhere. Warp Prism swinging in to warp in Adepts in random places. That's a four-kill Adept in there. 
she's gonna die, but look, she's got resonating glaives. She doesn't care in the world until she gets wiped out. Woof, Marines from Dark Templar starting to push out again. Is the Roach player still here, says Dark Templar. No, he left. No. No, says Reality. Reality's keeping track of what's going on here. Jax threw up some forward missile turrets and bunkers in case the Void Rays and Banshees tried to deal with his Marauders. I love that. That's so cool. How are the Ling upgrades doing? They got 1-1. One, one. They're working on 2-2 two, two and Adrenal. So we went right to Hive. Yeah, there's just no way. There's no way our Banshee player here, Kasix, Cool 6, is going to make this thing work. Good try, though. Like, really, really good effort. I do think the Banshee player took a little bit too long of time getting up Banshees. But the rush was so early. Maybe not the burrow. <laughs> Look at all those hosts. Tryptophobia, man. Ugh. I have a little bit of tryptophobia. Marines with 1-1 one, one in combat shield. The repair was not good enough. Base down. All these Marines might die, except scans are good. And the Marines. Oh, the bitch. She's are not good at fighting against Marines. Marines are such good anti-air. Oh, they're such good anti-air. And that's your GG. Team South, Dark Templar, Big Tosano, Reality, and Jax are your winner today. Woof! The only person with 100 supply is Reality. 120 supply worth of queens and lings, and a, one queen, and the rest of it was lings, which is hilarious. I don't think anybody else got over 100 supply here today. That's how nuts this was. Wow. Resources lost across the board. Pretty big. 7,900 lost from Reality. Tons of lings produced, and tons of lings died. 6,800 from Dark Templar and his Marines. 6,500 from No Build Order and his Hellions and Hellbats. So those were the leaders and the resources lost. Units lost, 116 Marines, 37 Adepts, 179 Lings, 25 Marauders, 2 Void Rays, 4 Hellbats, and 55 Hellions. Only 6 Banshees died, which is surprising to me. And then all 7 Urchers that were produced today died. Yeah, I mean, I think Team North maybe should have recognized a rush was coming a little bit sooner. Maybe sooner on the Spine Crawlers for the Zerg player. Maybe upgrade to a Planetary Terran player's. Maybe get some cannons and shield batteries before you start checking into Void Rays, if you're the Protoss. If you can survive the early rush, get some economy going, maybe then they could have won it. But it can be tough to coordinate that stuff in a mana battle. Usually you don't come in with an entire team, right? It can be tough to kind of to coordinate, right? Anyway, that was fun. I mean, that was a really fun mana battle. Usually the mana battles I get are like 30, 40 minutes long, and they're incredible nonstop, just blood fests. But this one, where, you know, Team South was on a timer. Team South needed to win this thing in probably around 15 minutes. Maybe even sooner than that if they were going to win. And they did. And they executed their plan. They said, let's rush. People went for proxies. People went for early pools. The micro was pretty good. Decisions were pretty good. The decision to get Nidus's from Reality was really smart. Again, no wonder Reality has a 68% win percentage. <laughs> in mono battle, which is like, what? Who does that? Oh, our guy. Our guy Reality does with his huge win percentage. Ah, <sighs> Very good. Like, really, really good. And that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a mono battle. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. The path of